What's up guys, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are doing a top 10 things to do and see in Glasgow. Glasgow's our city, so we've come up with this list um, to pretty much showcase things that um, we think that tourists would like to come and see in our city. For any pricing information of that, um, it does vary between attractions. Some are free, some are paid, so for information like that, we are going to throw it in the description below. We've also linked all the websites um, in the description, so check them out. But let's just get right into the top 10. In at number 10 we've got The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse is a visitor centre and an exhibition space situated right in the city centre of Glasgow. The Lighthouse is free to enter and depending on how much kind of reading you want to do, um, you can spend anywhere from like one to two hours here. There's a lot of like cool and interesting exhibits um, to see relating to kind of architecture and design. It's kind of a central hub for kind of design and creative industries in Glasgow. One of the big selling points about the lighthouse is it's got a really amazing kind of viewing platform that you can get a lift up to the sixth floor. That gives you kind of great views of the city and there's also a Macintosh tower which obviously as you can see from the footage there's a kind of big spiral staircase which takes you right up to the top canopy of all the buildings of Glasgow and you get a kind of 360 view of the city um, which is just kind of incredible. This kind of gives you loads of photo opportunities from between the kind of viewing platform and the Macintosh Tower. Coming in at number 9 is the Glasgow Science Centre. It's located on the outskirts of the city centre and it's around £5 in a taxi if you're leaving from the city. Prices vary here, this is a paid attraction, um, but age groups and there's add-ons depending on how much you want to do in the centre. As we said, link in the description gives you a full kind of table breakdown of that. The Glasgow Science Centre is split up over three floors and there's over 300 interactive attractions within. So there really is something for everyone, it caters for all age groups and kind of levels of knowledge of science. There's also a place called the Planetarium which is a visual representation of space and the cosmos and it's a really really interesting way to learn a little bit more about the universe. There's also a shop and a cafe attached as well as an IMAX cinema. This is really an event that can take all day or a few hours depending on what you want. In at number 8 we've got Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum which is located in the west end of Glasgow which is just a kind of short distance outside the city centre. It's Scotland's most visited free attraction and it's really not hard to see why. It's got 22 themed art galleries and it's also got 8,000 individual objects on display. The museum is split into really well organised sections. Um, there is kind of maps, there is um, artwork on the wall showing you all the different sections so it is really easy to navigate around the museum. Also again this is a place that you could literally spend all day in as there's so much to see so there is a little cafe um, right as you come into the museum um, so you can get your kind of breakfast or your lunch. Coming in at number 7 is the Tenants Brewery, otherwise known as the Well Park Brewery. It is the home of Tenants, which is an iconic Scottish beer. It's a personal favourite of mine, and it's actually one of Scotland's most well-known brands. The brewery offers tours, and both me and Graham have done it at separate times. We both had a really positive experience. They take you around about really knowledgeable tour guides, and you can ask a lot about the process. It's really interesting, and it actually touches on some of Scottish culture and some of Scottish history within the tour. There's been over 450 years of brewing at the Tenants Brewery, so you can imagine there's quite a lot of information. Um, they've got loads of memorabilia as well, dating back from the first ever advert or commercial, um, as you Americans call it, uh, all the way up to current times. They've got all the old packaging. It's really interesting just seeing how culture's changed um, throughout the years and how the advertising world has changed. In at number six on our list is the Necropolis slash Glasgow Cathedral. This is located just behind Tenants, so if you want to do the Tenants tour, it's super easy to kind of fit in the Necropolis and Glasgow Cathedral into your day as well. 
The necropolis is one of Europe's most significant cemeteries and it's been commonly known as Victorian City of the Dead. There is tour maps to kind of guide you around the cemetery but you can obviously go off and do it at your own pace. It's really interesting to gather some of the history to see some of Glasgow's most significant figures. As you can see from the video, the Glasgow Cathedral is absolutely stunning, the architecture is amazing. The Necropolis and the Glasgow Cathedral is stunning and it's just something that we really recommend going to check out, even if it's only for half an hour. Number five on the list is the Hop On Hop Off bus. It's the iconic big red bus that you see in loads of major cities around the world. I've personally been on one in Berlin, Barcelona, etc. And the one in Glasgow sticks to the high standards that I've experienced around the world. It offers a unique way to get around the city and you get to see most of the significant sites around the city on the bus. They offer both open top and closed roof buses, depending on the weather, because Scotland is, after all, known for its rainy climate at certain times of the year. As I said, it's got 21 stops and you get to see pretty much all the most significant parts of Glasgow and a lot of this top 10 are featured on that list. We've got a link down below of all the destinations so if you want to take advantage of that click on the link below. There's two tours on offer, there's the live guide which is obviously more interactive and allows you to ask questions and get feedback or there's the audio guide which comes in a variety of languages. They are English, French, German, Spanish, Mandarin, Italian and Polish so there's really is a kind of wide range of languages covered. We think it's one of the best ways to see the city. There's one and two day tickets on offer. And again, all the prices are in the description below. And at number four on our list is Ashton Lane. Ashton Lane is a cobbled street in the west end of Glasgow, which is filled with kind of quirky bars and restaurants. And it also has its own independent cinema. We recommend going to the Ashton Lane in the evening as there's a canopy of fairy lights that hang above the lane and obviously at night time it looks really picturesque when these are all kind of lit up. Hashtag Instagram bangers! Next up at number three on the list is the Riverside Museum. It's one of the most visually stunning museums from the outside in Scotland as you can hopefully see in some of the sick drone shots that we captured outside it. It was voted Museum of the Year back in 2013 and when you go inside it's not really hard to see why that happened. It has an array of vintage Glasgow trams, bicycles, even as an old police car within and it's really interesting to see how things have changed over the years. Again this museum is free and we think it offers one of the, the best value for your time spent here. It's really interesting, there's some interactive stuff for the kids. And there's plenty of interesting things for adults, so it really is something for all the family. Plus, it's directly next to a place called the Tall Ship and the Glasgow Tower, which is other two attractions which didn't make the top 10, but they also are nearby, so why not couple them up and spend a wee bit longer in this location. And at number two on our list is the famous Botanic Gardens, again based out in the west end of Glasgow. The Kibble Palace, which is situated inside the Botanic Gardens, is a huge glass house that features some of the most exotic plants all over the world. It's like a greenhouse, but on roids. Again, this glass house is free to enter and it's something really worth seeing. There's some really interesting sculptures and some kind of other bits of information dotted around the glass house. Like any other park, there's several places that you can kind of sit and eat your lunch and there's even a wee cafe if you don't bring your lunch which has kind of an array of sandwiches, coffee, cakes, anything like that. If you're out in the West End checking out any of the other attractions like Ashton Lane which is really close to the Botanic Gardens we would really recommend going even if you're only spending an hour to check out some of the exotic plants. Great number one on the list is the Goma, it's called the Gallery of Modern Art. It is four art galleries within. Quite interesting, we didn't spend a hell of a long time in there but there's some good opportunities, some good architectural sites and a lot of really interesting artwork. Also an added bonus here is directly outside it is the Duke of Wellington statue which is kind of world famous for having a traffic cone in its head 
which offers a great photo opportunity if you visit Glasgow. It's iconic. It's also right in the heart of Glasgow city centre, so it means that the likes of George Square's nearby, loads of bars and restaurants directly outside it. It's easy access to absolutely every one of the other top 10 from this location. So that was our top 10 Glasgow, hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything that you think we've missed, then let us know. If you've been to any of these places, then let us know what you thought. Hope you found it really useful. We enjoyed making it. We got to see some of Glasgow that even we hadn't seen. If you've got any ideas of other places we can visit around Scotland, or indeed the UK as a whole, we want to branch out. If you want to see in video bringing that cinematic B-roll into it, then let us know. We're really excited to kind of explore our country and promote it to the world. I know a lot of you guys have been getting our comments, a lot of fellow Scottish people have been coming over, kind of helping spread the word of a beautiful country. We super appreciated, and if you've made it this far, you're a total G. We want to get that view time up, we want to get started promoting Scotland, we want to start kind of taking over YouTube. Drop a sub, drop a like, hell, drop a dislike, we don't care, just any interaction is good, and let us know what you think.